Actually, don't try to share anything. You cannot share from here to Facebook. You can't. Huh? Uh, uh, on Jamila, can you see my slide? Am I on? No, we can no. see you, bro, not the slide. Oh, because somebody oh. tried to share, that's why my sharing has stopped. Oh, yeah. yeah, whoever tries that again, we'll have to remove you. Sorry for that because it disturbs. Okay, can you see my slides now? Yes, yes, bro. Okay, thank you. Uh, participants, kindly please don't uh, try to share the screen, then I would be out. <laughs> All right, uh, let me continue. And when you disturb, it disturbs my flow of thinking. <laughs> All right, so uh, I was saying that to define this is problem, definitely you have to review literature. It has to be systematic, critical literature review. Uh, through that, we can uh, actually identify and define this as problem. And then the flow would be on, which I'm going to show you today, okay? Uh, this one, I do not want to spend much time, but there are many uh, newcomers uh, in my webinar. So quickly, let me one, two minutes, I just explain it. I compare research with a tree, uh, and I compare research problem at the root of the tree. Uh, a tree starts with the roots, okay? And uh, whatever fruits we get and uh, the the... the the health of the tree and all those are dependent on the root. So your research is completely dependent on the research problem. How uh, good you are in identifying and defining research problem will determine what kind of outcome you are going to get from the research. Same as like when you're planting a tree, uh, it all depends on the quality of soil, uh, the water quality, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the fertilizers and all that, okay? so. This is problem is similar like uh, the roots of a tree. If the roots are not uh, strong, the, the tree will not be able to stand. A research will not stand if the research problem identified is not uh, something that is affecting, impacting the society. Okay, so that's what you have to keep in mind. Uh, the rest, I will not discuss. I do have a video in my YouTube channel on tree analogy. If you want to learn more about this, this is a concept I developed. Uh, you can watch that video in my YouTube channel. Uh, I do not want to make my participants bored. Those have been with me for last one year. I've been attending most of my uh, webinars. Huh? So I want to keep uh, new, fresh ideas and new slides. All right, this is the common complaint uh, that we receive from examiners and supervisors when it comes to research gap and research problem. It's a very common issue. Uh, uh, supervisors will tell you, or examiners will tell you, uh, your research problem is too broad, uh, it's not really focused, um, you fail to highlight uh, the issues properly. Uh, there's no real question or position, a sense of purpose of doing research, uh, clumps of uh, information, meaning it just roughly uh, sorted into categories and in the appropriate sources of data support, uh, supporting the research problem. No clear sense of voice uh, and disorganized. These are the common uh, terms uh, being used by examiners during the proposal defense of final viva versus sessions. Okay, so it is a very common uh, question from examiners. Uh, tell me what are the issues? Tell me what are the issues? I can't find issues. <laughs> okay, uh, issues are there but not highlighted enough, uh, meaning that you do not have any backup data to support the issues that you have raised. Okay, and uh, somehow uh, disjointed, disorganized discussion. The flow is not there. In a research write-up, you always look at two things. One is good flow, the other one is logical sequence. So the flow has to be, uh, you know, we're going with a, a logical sequence, one after another with a good flow, uh, with connecting one idea to another idea. So you cannot be having disorganized, disjointed statements in a research problem. Remember, as I said, um, Sorry, I cannot allow you to annotate. Uh, there are problems. Please don't try to do that. Huh? I just decline. All right. So please don't uh, don't request me uh, to allow you to annotate. Please don't. Uh, please don't. Uh, I will I will share the slide with you. The 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 organizers the organizers will share the slide with you. Your emails are with us. Those of you who have registered earlier. Those of you who have not registered today, you will fill up the feedback form. We will share the slide with you. So you do not have to. Uh, annotate. Uh, please don't disturb the flow. So these are the common complaints. So let me uh, go on and see how can I help you to solve this 
problems. These are the complaints, huh? so that when you have a draft, nobody can complain. These are the issues. <laughs> it is not broad. It's too broad. It's not focused. Um, it's not highlighted enough, and all those questions should not be there. If you uh, follow, if you follow uh, the, the recommended uh, way, I'm, I'm going to show you today. Okay. Uh, again, um, uh, in research, there is no uh, uh, definite formula that you must be following that one. You shouldn't follow other one. Uh, this is the approach I do take, and uh, I'm going to uh, share with you. Okay. Now, what is research gear? Let me start with that, right? So the first step of conducting research is identifying a previously unexplored area of research. Uh, that is the first research gap we always find, uh, unexplored areas. Uh, the research has not been really uh, done. Um, uh, Ponjamila, can you hear me? They say they, I'm, I'm not audible. Is it true? No, no, you, you're very clear. Okay. We can hear you very well. Okay, thank you, thank you. So uh, when you are conducting a research, uh, the easiest uh, research problem or issue you can find is the area which has not been really explored. It may not be unexplored, but could be underexplored. Uh, a lot of research, a few research is done, but not many research is done. That gives you the room to, the room to do real research, okay? So there's a gap. It's a gap that unexplored area is a gap, okay? Uh, in marketing, we call it niche area, right? When you run a business, uh, we, we, we can uh, find out a niche area where nobody concentrates and you can produce product and market in that, uh, uh, you know, in the segment of market. So niche area is like similar to research gap, an area of research which has not been explored much. Okay, this is one. This is a research gap. Choosing an untapped area in your research field will improve your chances of conducting excellent study and increase the chances of getting it published. Uh, so that's what I'm seeing, right? Unexplored or untapped area. Uh, so you are going to be one of the first few. Uh, never say, I'm the first one conducting this research because you have never read, you know, all, all of paper. You will never be able to read all papers published and uh, research is conducting around the world. Uh, this is a common sentence we find among students, PhD students. Uh, the student will claim, I'm the first one. This research is the first one. This is the first attempt. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Because while you are taking research, undertaking research, some other people might be also undertaking research from different parts of the world. So when you make a statement, make sure you are very careful. You should not be doing that. So the big question is, how to identify and define research problem of your study? Later, I'm going to show you, uh, the, uh, discuss the gap between research gap and research problem. I'm going to do that. Don't worry. So an untapped area or unexplored or under research area is a research gap. This is one, huh? Let's keep in mind. All right, uh, some researchers have clear ideas about research problem or area they want to pursue from the beginning. Uh, if you have done your master by research uh, and you are continuing in the similar area to do your PhD, pursue PhD, then definitely you have clear ideas what you would like to do. Uh, some slides I'm going to share with you, Dr. Uluwa Seyi, who has done PhD with me from Nigeria. And he did his master's in our university, then he proceeded to do his PhD with me. And he finished within one year and now nine months. His PhD was completed one year and nine months. He cannot submit before two years, so I asked him to keep it, uh, wait for three months, we write the papers, we, you know, then he submit after two years. Because his ideas were very clear. He did his master's by research in the area, the same area he continued doing the research, okay? So some researchers may have that. If you have that, then definitely um, you are very lucky. You are very lucky. You have some background. Uh, possibly you have been working in an area and you want to pursue research, undertake research in the same area. You may have, you may have also clear idea of what kind of research you like to take. So the problem could be uh, in, in your mind already. However, however, we say researchers, particularly those who are at the early stage of their career, you have not, you do not have any working experience and you did not do any research before. There are many, right, uh, sitting with me now. So you will find yourself in a fix uh, when you have to uh, zero down to your research topic, which is original and innovative, <laughs> okay? So when you go to the proposal defense of final, uh, uh, that's the normal question that you will always see, uh, right? Uh, whether your research is original, what's the novelty of research? Your research got to be original. 
you may replicate and yet you have to have some originality and some kind of innovativeness right in, in research you do also look at the creativity innovativeness are being always uh, looked at okay so the best way to do this is to identify gap from existing research in the field all right finding a research gap so existing research in the field so you have to read papers no choice as i always see uh, the researcher's job is basically to read read and read <laughs> we have to continue present uh, reading and reading and reading and trying to get control over uh, the area of research that we'd like to embark on okay? now um so as we read papers or books uh, on the topics of our interests we may realize that there are some areas that uh, have significant scope for more research and they have not been tapped by other researchers so when you are going to read papers, I will show you, I'm going to show you which part of the paper uh, you should find uh, some significant gap, some scope where you should be, uh, you can be undertaking a research, pursuing a research, okay? So as you read the paper, the, towards the end, you will see suggestion for future research where the authors will say that I have tried to do this and these are the things that I couldn't do. So if you, you know, look at carefully and read carefully, you can get some clue that these are the untapped area unresearched area, uh, under research area, you know, that's where you can actually find the gap. So we are saying, in other words, mm -hmm. no one has picked up the work on these ideas. A research gap, a literature gap refers to unexplored or underexplored areas that have a scope for further research, okay? So you are finding out from literature where uh, it is underexplored or unexplored, under-researched or, you know, uh, 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 sort of a thing that you see that become uh, the, 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 you know, the best way of looking at it right, through literature. So a literature gap or research gap, uh, personally, I do not uh, put it together. Huh? To me, research gap in different, uh, there's a difference between research gap and liter literature gap. <laughs> For me, uh, research literature gap, we identify through reviewing literature. A systematic review, a critical review will help you to identify the literature gap. But once you identify the literature gap, then we have to get evidence, the backup data from the industry. Then combining these two become a research gap to me, huh? uh, to me. So for me, research gap is literature gap plus the data from industry, backup data from industry that become the research gap, okay? So a research gap is an unexplored topic revealed during a literature search and has a scope for further exploration. So the gap, it's also considered the missing piece or pieces in the research literature, okay, in an area that has not been uh, explored or underexplored. Okay, it could be population sample size, temporal no location, research method. It could be data collection, uh, kind of data collection method used. Uh, could be different uh, kind of analysis. Uh, could be many other issues like uh, exploring to different variables, uh, trying of different testing, and all that. Okay. So the gap could come from many places, okay, the many places. Those of you who attended the webinar last week with me, I have shown you three different areas where actually broadly you get a research problem. Knowledge gap, uh, then we put practical gap and methodological gap. Those three, uh, I have shown it in the last week, so I do not want to repeat uh, those slides again. Uh, those of you who did not join my last webinar, uh, you can see that video will be up in my YouTube channel by next week. Uh, you can watch those uh, slides if you like to, okay? Um, all right. Now, categories of uh, research gap. Even in research gap, we may categorize it. Okay, we may categorize it. And I have put several different types here. Uh, a research gap could be identified as an empirical gap. It could be a knowledge gap. It could be evidence gap, it could be a theoretical gap, it could be population gap, it could be application or implementation gap, or it could be even a methodological gap. <clears throat> there could be many more, but I have put, I think, about seven gaps here for you to understand it better. Okay, so it comes from everywhere. You can see it's not something so difficult that we think as we struggle to finalize the research gap and defining research problem. Uh, it's not actually that difficult as it seems to be. Uh, as we uh, develop the arts, uh, the, you know, the skills and equipment necessary to conduct research, uh, we will find it easier, not that difficult anymore. <laughs> uh, everything that you do in the world has an art of doing, you see? 
uh, those of us, uh, even for me, when I started writing first time uh, my thesis, uh, it took me a long time to write in the first sentence. <laughs> it took me weeks to write one page. That's how we started, right? Uh, I think most of you do that. Uh, but as you go alone, uh, writing 20, 30 pages already, you know, uh, it become easier. And the more you write, the more uh, easy you feel. Uh, similar like uh, when you publish a paper. I remember when I published my first research paper, the list of corrections, I saw it like I was, I said, I have to give up. I cannot publish this paper. <laughs> five, seven pages, you know, five, seven pages of correction given. Then I did a correction and then they sent me second time and third time. But when I published first paper, I was so amazed, so satisfied, so happy, excited. So probably the second one, less trouble, third one, less trouble. As I published 20, 30 more, then writing paper become, uh, become uh, uh, something enjoying, uh, something exciting, okay? Uh, so that's how it is. So when you conduct first time research, of course you'll be struggling, but uh, if you learn certain uh, ways and methods, uh, it may not be that uh, difficult for you. And that's what we are trying to do, okay? So there are several categories of research gap. Uh, research gap may come from uh, uh, knowledge gap. It can come from evidence gap in having evidence from different places which has not been used. There are many data are there uh, outside there. We call it big data. Uh, those data are there, but people have not been uh, exploring those data. So you can uh, use uh, new data which has not been explored. So evidence gap. Theoretical gap, you can validate a theory. We can verify a theory, you can nullify a theory, you can extend a theory, you can integrate few theories together. There are many things there. You can teach the effectiveness of a theory in a new uh, location and all that. Policies are there, but implementations could be poor. And that is very common in Asian countries. We, we have very good policies, but when it comes to implementations, we are very poor in implementation. So research can be undertaken. Seeing the policies are there, but implementation are not good. So research is connected. How can you, uh, you know, enforce uh, uh, more uh, implementation stages uh, to make sure that implementation is good? And that methodological gap in research, uh, one of the most important element is the robustness of data analysis and all that. Uh, and also the data quality and all that comes in, right? So methodological gap. Uh, there are many different ways of doing research. Uh, if you find that uh, past researchers have used certain uh, way of conducting it, uh, you may feel that, no, these methods are not really right. So you may choose some uh, uh, different method uh, to do it, okay? So to identify research gap, you need to do a thorough review of existing literature in both the broad and specific areas of topic. So that, that gives you uh, something very important. Huh? So when you are reading paper, you are not going to specific areas only. You are going for broad area, and then you are, you know, cascading down into the specific areas of your research. Even you make, uh, you start from international, then moving to a regional, then coming to your own country, then coming to the industry. It may even cascade down like that, okay? So it, it has to be a thorough review of existing literature, all right? Now, <clears throat> how does the research problem differ from a research gap? <laughs> research problem and research gap, okay? Let me clarify that. So. You say your research problem should make a positive influence on the domain. So research problem because you want to find a solution, remember? So you will have a positive influence on the domain. Uh, problem is there and you are providing a solution now. So the problem is statement uh, based on research gap should be emerged from uh, through uh, you know, a thorough literature review and the review should be uh, you know, making out of the gap that is already available in the literature. So the research problem and research gap are closely related. All right, closely related, and uh, especially uh, when you do PhD research, uh, there must be uh, uh, a link, a linkage uh, uh, with research problem and uh, research gap. So you have research gap, and from there you define the problem. Huh? You take the gap and you define the problem. So research is uh, uh, about discovering the truth of something, right? That's what you said in ontology, right? Uh, the paradigm of uh, PhD, the, the philosophy of research that you look at. We would not like to discover truth, okay? And uh, that truth is, if I truth is actually a research problem. May find out the truth or may uh, nullify the truth, huh? okay. falsify the truth, right? Um, all right. Um, can you please uh, mute your microphone, brother, please? 
Sorry, uh, I don't feel it nice uh, saying same thing uh, many times. Uh, so research is about identifying a truth, finding out the truth of uh, the problem that is uh, uh, existing now, right? So while we do research, either we try to prove whether this is truth, uh, the kind of uh, phenomena that you observe, or whether it is false, okay? That's what we do. That's ontology, right? And then we move to epistemology, uh, wherever you identify the knowledge in that area, right? So it may also be something that nobody has answer or solution for yet. Huh? So you say that there is a solution. Uh, still, you can do a research finding out the truth, whether the solution working, the solution is not working, okay? But there could be no solution yet at all. Huh? So there is a problem for which you have to find solution or answer, okay? Hence, there is a research problem. So when there is a problem, answers are there, but answers are not sufficient. Uh, not adequate, so that become a research problem, or even the solution totally not there, and then you conduct a research to find a solution to it. That is also a research problem. So the research gap is what may motivate you to focus on that research problem to do your research. Okay, so research gap is the motivation. So you are looking at the area which is untapped, which is under researched, which is not, uh, which is unidentified. Uh, okay. So you are focusing on that, you, you find like, oh yeah, this is something totally new and I'm going to find something new. Uh, this problem is, is existing and affecting uh, many people, the society, country, the world. And at the end of my research, I'm going to provide a solution. So you feel like you're motivated, you're inspired uh, to do research, okay? So there is a gap. And when you fill up that gap, it becomes a solution to your problem, okay? Solution to your problem. Now, um, what is a research gap and problem statement? Huh? So we say research gap is the research problem discovered after conducting a rigorous literature review. But problem statement is constructing or constructed sentence on how you describe your research problem. Huh? So now research problem and problem statement. Huh? So problem statement basically are the sentences that describe, constructed sentences that describe the research problem, okay? which is usually we say is a subset of research problem. So problem statement is a subset of research problem. And that answers the question of many PhD students in chapter one, what should I write? Research problem or problem statement or statement of the problem, okay? <laughs> I personally prefer research problem because that is more comprehensive, okay? And under that you put the statements, uh, those are the problem statement because you may not have the single, single statement, you have many statements to define your research problem. So jointed, integrated few statements of problem become a research problem. So I prefer you to put research problem rather than a statement of the problem, okay? Now, uh, research question and research problem. So research question is a statement made in a question form, seeking to study, learn, explore, examine more about the research topic, okay? So research question, uh, there could be many, okay? Uh, more than one, definitely. Okay, basically we convert or transform uh, research problem into research questions. There are few research questions, okay? So research question will typically lead to hypothesis. So if you look at chapter one, research questions, and we move to chapter three, uh, methodology, we will see uh, whether your research questions are actually translated into research objectives or not. That's very important, huh? we, because research is one piece of work. In PhD, you just want a problem that you have identified and then you focus on it. So there must be continuation, the flow, the idea will be flowing from the beginning until the end. So last week also in my uh, presentation, I've showed you action of the research and then you have a conclusion there. Okay, so we, we have to have the So research question will typically lead to uh, hypothesis. Uh, those of you cannot hear me, possibly it's because of your internet problem. Uh, possibly you can leave and come back. I think I'm audible to most of the participants so they can hear me as I see in the chat box. So those of you cannot hear me, uh, I think it's because of your uh, internet issue, please leave and then join back. That possibly uh, work, huh? that possibly, that may work for you. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Prof. Right. So, uh, uh, so, sorry, Prof, can I say something? Yeah, if they cannot uh, hear well, maybe they can join on Facebook because we have already like more than 700 participants. 
and the yeah it's too much already so better if they leave join the facebook okay okay those of you cannot hear me i'm definitely audible uh, you can leave uh, the, here you can leave the waybacks and you can join facebook live you can join facebook live uh, upon jamila can you put the facebook link in the chat box please okay we are putting the facebook uh, uh, facebook link to you uh, in the in the chat box you can join the facebook live the, it is already there the link is already there please join in the facebook okay all right so uh, there could be several research questions in a study okay so your research problem in one but then you will transfer it into you'll translate into few research questions so there will be always few research questions i'm going to show you example do not worry uh, let me slowly uh, go on i have a flow uh, so let me follow the flow okay so do not worry. now why it is so important to identify unique research gap uh, now imagine that you have completed your research work and wanted to publish and then only you find out that another researcher have already published something similar <laughs> okay <laughs> So how devastating that would be, very devastating, right? You think, and uh, most of you will claim, as PhD student, final viva versus you will claim, uh, this is the first attempt of this kind in my country. And imagine now, when you finish your business, you want to publish, paper, you find somebody has already published. It's no more new, no more new. Huh? So that's 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 how important it is. So if you fail to identify a unique research gap, uh, you will have this kind of problem later. Okay, um, and also uh, from my experience that what I have to uh, advise you or suggest you, I'm sorry, I wouldn't say advise you, I would recommend or suggest you, um, do not share uh, your, do not share your theoretical framework uh, before a final life, but the full framework, do not publish it better, do not publish it. Because while you publish after your proposal defense, somebody embark on research and finish before you, then you are dead. <laughs> Okay, that's why some universities, they do not have the requirement, publication requirement, but some universities, they require you to publish certain papers, okay? Uh, the universities who do not require you to have published paper is that argument, because if you publish after a proposal defense and you write a content content paper or concept paper and you publish it and then uh, somebody just take it on from there and he finish faster before you and then you will be in trouble. You are no more... Your research is no more novel. <laughs> Originality will be gone. Okay. So it is necessary to find out those problems in your research field that which have not been addressed before. That's better. Areas which have not been addressed. Uh, how can you find that? Through literature review. I'm going to show how to do it. So not only, uh, you know, uh, would you be investing your funds and resources in the right projects, but also increasing the chances of your publication. That's what we say. Uh, if you identify successfully the area which has not been addressed before, then uh, uh, it, it helps you uh, to, to increase even your uh, publication, okay? Now, uh, the challenge is uh, to identify unique research gap. So I'm saying that the finding gaps and coming out with the original and innovative topics could be tricky. It could be very challenging, okay? So now, um, these are the some uh, areas which could be challenging. For example, say, uh, dealing with enormous amount of information. Uh, with social media uh, technological advancement, you just click, you get hundreds of papers. Uh, that time I remember I did my MBA at University of Science Malaysia. Uh, to do that small mini thesis, uh, the, the, the suffering that I had is, uh, that I had, you know, is I cannot imagine now. Uh, to get a paper, I used to go to the USM library and then I spent a whole day, I did not get even one paper. You know, I get one journal, uh, click through the pages, looking for related papers I didn't get whole day not even one paper and we spend day after days you know and then when I am exhausted at USM library then I travel to Kuala Lumpur University of Malaya or UI library to see some other journals to get the papers but those days are gone now we are overloaded with information you just click just one click you get hundreds of papers available so now you get so many papers now so which one to take it which one to take that's a challenging a task for us okay very challenging task having too much of information and how to screen and scan and find the relevant the right materials for us number two difficulty of searching in an organized manner um, those of you who are not experienced you may have difficulty uh, finding out uh, uh, or organizing the right kind of information that is required 
Okay, so you get some ideas and you, you, you lost it unless you properly noted it down. Okay, so even difficulty organizing uh, uh, the, the way you should be searching the paper. I, I do have some recommendations I'm going to show you afterwards. Hesitation in questioning established norms. Huh? This is very common, uh, especially for new researchers. Uh, you, you don't feel you dare to question, <laughs> you dare to question uh, the findings of someone. Uh, okay. As we do more and more research, uh, we, we tend to uh, challenge uh, you know, the, the findings. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do as a PhD student. Uh, but at the beginning, of course, uh, for the beginning, it's not that easy uh, you know, to question the exist, uh, established uh, norms or established uh, findings uh, that we have in the research area. So that hesitation would be there for some time. But as you read more and more papers and you get a whole of the area of research, you should be able to have that capability or ability uh, to question uh, the established uh, norms uh, of, of research, okay, the findings. So this is uh, something uh, we say identifying a unique research gap. How can you do that? So we say, okay, let us map your story. <laughs> let us map your story. We start with that. Huh? We know mind mapping. Huh? I'm very sure all of you are familiar with that. So let us start asking question. First question, what is my topic? <laughs> It is a very simple way. What is my topic? My topic is about online shopping. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but online shopping, there are many things there. So, okay, I want to look at effectiveness of online shopping. Uh, you can. Uh, but there are many areas to look at. You are looking at uh, the trust, uh, you know, uh, the pricing, the after sales services, and uh, many other things that you can look at. Huh? Uh, you can use the TEM model and, uh, and, and many other models available, TPV and many other models available. You can so what is your topic? We start with that. Then after that, the next question would be, who are the key people in that field? Uh, who are the key people? Meaning, who are the key authors who have done research and published papers? Okay, that's the next question. So now you're identifying the key papers. Remember, I said you need to have about 40, 40 key papers for PhD research. Okay, uh, finding out key papers is not difficult. It's not difficult because once you find one paper, that paper will be citing many key papers. And if you go on reading more papers and more papers, you will always find similar paper being cited by everyone. Those are the key papers you'll always find. Okay, so first question, what is your topic? Next one, who are the key people? Who are the, what are the key studies in that area? Then you follow on asking yourself again, what are the key ideas in the field? What methodologies have been used? So now, where do we get these ideas? By reading papers, by reading papers. As you read more and more paper, you get hold of more papers, you read more papers. So you, you, you see what are the key ideas there and what are the methodology being used? Okay? What are some of the strengths and weaknesses of existing research? That's very important. Huh? So now you are looking at what the strengths and weaknesses, that gives you the room to find out the research gap. <laughs> so you're looking at the strengths of particular research and looking at weaknesses of particular research. And from there, you are finding out the gap. And that gap become your research problem, right? That's what you look at. And finally, if it is PhD research, then next question is very important. What will be your contribution? What will your contribution be? And how will it be different? So that's what we ask a student uh, in the final viva we see or even proposal difference. What is new? What is new? So what is new in terms of knowledge or what is new in terms of methodology or what is new in terms of uh, practical industrial aspects? So something new must be there. So while you are reading papers and identifying uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, then if you embark on certain areas to uh, identify research gap, then you have to ask yourself, by identifying that research gap and defining that research problem, what are you going to contribute and how different your contribution is going to be, okay? So that's how, how we look at it. You see now, uh, those of you have already been vaccinated for COVID-19, you know, we have now Pfizer, we have AstraZeneca, we have uh, Moderna, we have Sinovac. Uh, those are the very popular ones, Sinopharm. Those are the very popular ones. And uh, we cannot say which one is more effective with LACPT. Maybe you can, but I do not want to make any conclusion as I read. Uh, so uh, definitely there are different people have done research and they have solution on that. Different vaccination, okay? But same COVID-19, 
same coronavirus, but you have six, five or six or ten different vaccines. Okay, so, and all of them are different. They are not exactly the same. <laughs> That's what you see. So many people are doing research, coming out with solutions, and solutions are different and yet impactful, significant. They are providing some kind of solution. That's what we expect you to do that. Huh? So even those uh, vaccine we have, it's still there are rooms for researchers to come out with new vaccine. Now they are giving two doses. Possibly you'll get soon one. One dose is enough. Okay, and uh, similar kind of many other new things are you possibly you can find. Now these are the five questions that I give you. If you have answers to those five questions, you already have the research gap with you. Very exciting research gap and exciting research problem. If you do not have answers to these five, then you are not there yet. <laughs> Okay, you are not there yet. You are not there yet. So this is a mind mapping. Huh? This is a mind map. Map it nicely. Put that question in a map. Ask yourself these questions. And if you have the answers of these questions, you are ready to go. Just proceed. Huh? You start flying already. <laughs> but any of these uh, not answered, uh, I will ask you to hold on and read more papers. Okay. <laughs> All right. These are the few other uh, recommendations uh, we have to identify unique research gap. Um, basically, we say uh, you got to read a lot. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, make a list of uh, any other questions huh, that you, you, you have about your topic. I have given you five questions, but there could be uh, more than those five questions. Okay, so now below are there some. Uh, now I'm going to talk about some strategies that can uh, you can use to make uh, the most. Uh, of your time okay the first one when you read paper read the suggestion for future research very carefully okay uh, almost every one of us you know what you do at the end of research we write limitations of the study and then suggestion for future research not all all research all research will have weaknesses limitations and uh, we will have to declare that we have to acknowledge that uh, we have to express that in our research papers in the thesis. And from there, we move on and we say, these are my limitations. And future researchers should be doing this to cover up these limitations, okay? So read, read huh? carefully, read carefully. Uh, the suggestion for future research. We say many times the authors will identify areas where they think there is a research gap exists, okay? So by looking at uh, reviewing the suggestion for further research, you will already find the research gap there. Okay, they will already tell the research gap is already there. Okay. The other one is as you are researching, uh, you will uh, most likely come across citation of seminal works. These are the research studies that you that is basically uh, the key papers. Remember, I said identify about 40 key papers and review them carefully. So those papers will be mentioned by everyone. So it's easy to find. Find these key papers. Uh, kindly unmute your mute your microphone, please, please. So first one, we said you read the uh, suggestion for future research. Uh, that's where you will uh, definitely uh, find a clue of research gap. Second one. A look at the key papers, you know, see which paper is being cited the more uh, mentioned again and again. Uh, get all of this paper and review it uh, carefully, okay? And then the third one could be uh, reading the meta analysis. Uh, there, there are some content uh, concept papers, huh? those papers are very good. Uh, you will see many uh, research papers, uh, not research papers, articles published based on literature alone, just literature review, literature revisit. Uh, I, I did, uh, we did publish, uh, many of my PhD students, I will always encourage them to do it, uh, okay? So we do publish concept paper, that's basically only literature, only literature. So there's no data uh, collection, there's no analysis, and uh, there's no discussion on it. It's basically uh, just uh, based on literature. So if you look at those papers, then you will be able to look at the trends and changes over time, okay? And you should be able to summarize the previous research findings. That gives you uh, basically uh, room uh, to identify the research gap and then you continue to define your research problem. 
All right, these are the, some other guidance here. Let me uh, go through quickly this, all right? So, so these are the some steps. Number one, uh, you select a topic or question that motivates you. Uh, that's very important. Huh? As a researcher, uh, you should be identifying a question or topic that motivates you. It's very important to be motivated, to be inspired. You have to feel, uh, you have to feel uh, excited, uh, inspired to, uh, to take on a research huh? because his, his, his PhD is going to take three to five years, long journey. Huh? If it is not an interesting topic, you are going to suffer more and more. Okay, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, physical, intellectual and emotional effects. So make sure the topic is interesting to you, something motivational to you. Then find out the keywords. Okay, say for example, if I say, um, uh, the simple example that I give, uh, say for example, you are talking about job satisfaction. Uh, what are the keywords you can think of? What satisfy you? Salary, right? Uh, what more? Training and development, recruitment selection, leadership style. So there could be many, right? So once you identify this as problem, then find the keywords, keywords, uh, find the keywords. Okay, so those can be actually uh, uh, identified through your, uh, uh, you know, understanding of the research area and all that. Then use the identified keywords to search literature. So when you are searching the topic in uh, literature, then use those keywords uh, to look for uh, relevant literature for you. Then number two, number four, right? Uh, look for topics or issues that are missing or not addressed within your main topic. So now again, you are going back again, those are not being addressed yet. So again, feature studies and all that. And you have to do a systematic literature review. So there are ways of doing it, uh, which I'm, I'm going to discuss a bit, uh, not a lot, a bit I will show you. Now, how to identify research gap again, all right? So there are few steps here. I think there are five tips I've taken from someone has written from Pakistan. I find it very good. Uh, this I've taken from her, okay? So you may wonder, uh, what would be the best way to come up with innovative research question? Okay, uh, there are many different ways of doing it, but it, it it depended on your curiosity, creativity, imagination, and judgment. Okay, so as a researcher, you got to be curious. You got to be inquisitive, as I always say, inquisitive. Your curiosity, your creativity, your uh, level of imagination, your level of judgment on certain uh, phenomena that you observe help you easily to identify your uh, research problem. But this all curiosity, creativity, imagination, judgment is again uh, developing you uh, through reading and reading and reading. Uh, all right. So as you see anything, you will start questioning. So that, that gives you uh, the room to develop this kind of abilities and capabilities. So these are the five tips I have. Few tips, five, I think, yeah. Look for inspiration from published literature. Silk help from your supervisor. Use digital tools to find purpose. Make note of your queries and uh, research uh, is question that uh, you identify. So this is one. So when you read uh, uh, books and articles, uh, we say this will not only help you understand the depth of work done by researchers, but also it provides opportunity to ask questions that lead you to a research gap. So while you read the uh, papers, uh, you try to get inspiration. See when uh, we uh, were doing a level or a level, many of our parents uh, used to give example of students who have done well before, right? <laughs> to get inspiration. So we read paper to get inspiration from them. All right, so that's what uh, a professor of economics from Columbia University, Don Davis, he said, read what is being written in your field, recognize the contribution that have come in the prior literature and do not, but do not be worried by it. Question everything, question everything. That's important here, right? <laughs> so you read the papers, Acknowledge the contribution uh, that they have may have done excellent research. You acknowledge it, but question them, question them. Uh, nothing is perfect. Okay, research, when you come to research, everything is questionable. So question them. That's important. That makes you curious, inquisitive. Uh, that makes you creative, innovative, and all that. Okay. So these are the few questions you may ask to get inspired. What is the significance of this research work? Okay, how can this article help me formulate my research question? Does the author argument require more clarification? What issues question have the author not addressed? Is there any different perspective that I can consider? What other factors could have influenced the results? Okay, and other methods for reduce use outdated or no longer considered, you know, valid. So I can uh, come out with a new one. So these are the few questions that you can ask yourself 
to get inspiration, uh, inspiration. You're finding out gap already, you know? So these are seven questions here that I put it here. Uh, if you have answers of these seven questions, definitely you will have research gap identified already. <laughs> Earlier I've given you five questions, now there are seven questions here, which also help you to identify research questions. And these are some more elaboration on uh, these. And of, of course, they are advising you to look at uh, suggestion for future research, as I said earlier, and also for, uh, advising you to do meta-analysis or reviews, right? Now, the second one, seek help from your research supervisor. This is very important. If you are doing uh, academic research, then you've got to be closely working with your supervisor, very closely. Right? Sometimes, unfortunately, some supervisors may not be that active. Sometimes students are not active. It could be either way. Uh, I, I, since I have been doing uh, webinars uh, and I'm connected with the students from over 40 countries, I do receive calls, I do answer, I do get a lot of emails, a lot of WhatsApp messages asking this question, that question. There are many complaints about supervisors, many, many. <laughs> supervisors are not helpful, supervisors do not really have, uh, supervisors are not really updated, supervisors don't read papers, uh, supervisors do not give any comments, supervisors do not read my draft, those comments, complaints are very common. Okay, um, and even there, there, there was one student called me and said, Prof, when I was arguing on a topic with my supervisor, I thought I was right, but my supervisor asked me, are you supervisor or me supervisor? <laughs> so I see how can a supervisor go to, uh, can go up to that level, uh, asking a student, are you my supervisor? <laughs> so by right, a student should be encouraged to ask questions. I love to see a student questioning me, debating with me. That's what I want, you know. Uh, I want students to read papers and then after reading five papers, come and see me, sit down with me and tell me what did you find. And if I say something wrong, tell me, Prof, you did not read this paper. You do not really understand it. <laughs> I read this paper. I understand better than you. <laughs> so that's what I want. You know? That's what I want. And that's what research is supposed to do. That's what research is supposed to do. Okay. As a researcher, as a researcher, you are capable of reading, understanding, and arguing. And supervisors should salute you if they find you, you are arguing with the supervisors, okay? So get help from supervisors, okay? But again, you've got to be polite, you've got to be friendly with the supervisors. Understand the way supervisor works, understand the supervisor's mentality and all that. People, human being, human being we have many weaknesses and we have to understand that we have to carry on. Huh? All right, so there's something very important, yeah? working with the supervisors, okay? Uh, all right, uh, let me move on. Uh, this is, uh, I'm very poor in it. Let me, <laughs> let me uh, uh, acknowledge it. You're using digital tools to find out the papers, okay? Uh, familiarize yourself with the creative bodies in the field. So you can actually use a website like Essential Science Indicators. Uh, this one, uh, I put the link here. I share the slide with you. You can click here, you will get the link. Or you can even use Google Trends. Uh, you can just click and you can get it and uh, you can find out, okay? So, um, these uh, digital tools can be uh, used uh, to identify uh, even papers. And there are, there are ways of doing it, which I'm not very good in it, but uh, uh, I know some of you are very good in it, okay? So, I, I leave it there. there. Make note of your every queries or make note of your queries. It's a good practice to note all the questions that cross your mind while reading any published literature. And that's why I always suggest that students, especially research students, should carry a book. I call it, um, uh, what, I do, uh, what do you call it? Ideas Notebook. Sorry, Ideas Notebook. Ideas Notebook. I, I call it the ideas notebook. You have to have a uh, diary. It's a, it's a beautiful diary, right? Many times we write every night before we go to bed, we write something of the day that thing happened, right? Many of us, we have that behavior. That kind of diary, I call it ideas notebook. You need to have a notebook. It can be even written in your uh, desktop or even handphone, doesn't matter. But whatever ideas come in your mind, just write it down. Ideas notebook, very important for researchers. Sometime while you are walking uh, on the road, sometime while you are playing badminton, uh, many times, while because I love playing badminton, <laughs> many times I get good research idea while I'm playing badminton because I enjoy that game and ideas suddenly come there. Okay, so uh, ideas may come from anywhere, you see. So, 
as you are driving and uh, you are listening to a song or even recitation from holy books uh, from Muslim Quran or any other thing. While you do that, you still with your mind. The research is something once you register for PhD, it's always there in your head. Even if you do not have any progress at all, it affects you. It's inside your mind, inside your mind. It's not out there. It doesn't matter what you do and how hard you try to get rid of it. The idea would be there. What happens if you just discontinue and drop out from the PhD program? Until you die, it's going to be in your head already. <laughs> it's not going to be out. Either you complete it or you don't complete it. PhD is going to be in your head. It's going to be there. <laughs> so there's a many people say uh, PhD is permanent head damage. Some people say permanent health damage. Some people say permanent hair damage. <laughs> Uh, but I personally uh, say permanent, permanent uh, happiness degree, PhD, permanent happiness degree. <laughs> you do things right uh, and you complete within time. At the end, you'll be the happiest person on earth. Okay, uh, last uh, uh, Friday, I was attending a final Viva versus session at Taylor's University. After a student has finished his uh, Viva, even, uh, you know, we can see, we know, we know, we know that. You come out with the joy of crying, right? Uh, if you fail, uh, you, you cry with sorrows and all that. So keep note, keep note, uh, keep track of uh, what the author is telling you and all that. But I do have also a, a template to show you how to do research uh, summary of a paper, so all that, okay? All right, so th this will basically help you to uh, ensure there's no unintended plagiarism of uh, different papers, okay? And this is what you say, research is question, meaning, one, you have uh, a research problem, and then you transform it to few research questions. Make sure you identify papers for every research question. Say, for example, your main theme is job satisfaction, and your uh, dimensions uh, to make, uh, sorry, not dimension, the independent variables are leadership quality and whatnot. Uh, leadership, uh, the employee-employee relationship, leadership style, uh, working environment, uh, all those are, uh, right? So identify paper for each and every research question, every construct that you have, okay? And you continue, uh, keep reading until, until, until you have found something extraordinary, until you find something that no one has actually kept, tapped it, okay? No one has actually tapped it, okay? So keep reading and asking question until uh, you find the extraordinary problem that you have been looking for. Huh? These are some example, let me move on to the, uh, uh, this one, huh? So these are the some example. Uh, dirt of research in uh, emerging economy, uh, even though developed countries, a lot of research being there, but in, in emerging country research has not been taken in place. That is a research gap. Contemporary issues give conflicting or inconclusive results. So research has been done a lot, but findings are conflicting and inconclusive. That gives you a research gap. Limited studies on the specific area. That is a research gap. Unexplored or under-researched. That is a research gap. Prior research suffered significant methodological uh, contribution. So that is also a research gap. Um, sorry, uh, I think my presentation slide, I have to share it again. Don't worry, I'm going to share it. Don't worry. Uh, because we have 700 participants, so that's why, uh, you know, it's quite heavy. It's all right. Uh, I'm visible now, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes doctor. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're saying that inapplicability or irrelevance of findings in developing economies. I mean, because uh, the, 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 the originality of research, novelty of research, most of the research are taken, uh, are done in the developed countries, unfortunately. Yeah? So uh, most of us, we replicate the studies done in the developed countries. So when developed countries uh, findings are there, may not be applicable in our country, may not be relevant to our countries. So that is also a research gap. Okay. Inconsistency in findings of prior studies. So you see, uh, findings that there are some, some say significant, some say not significant, some say positive, some say negative. So that is inconsistent. So that is also a research gap. Okay. Um, now, example of how uh, research uh, question is arrived. Okay. So you see here, literature issues. Say, for example, uh, literature issues here that uh, contemporary issues have conflicting and positive ideas. Most extended studies focus on profitability, not other financial performance. Uh, then role of innovation, for example, this study, particular study that I am citing, uh, is uh, ignored, I know, in the existing literature. Practical issues, 
I said the link between business and financial risks. Uh, one is subject of few studies only. Five studies suffer significant methodological uh, limitation, inapplicability or irrelevance. Right? Those I said. So you have literature issues, you have practical issues. That makes it up a research gap. That's what I said, right? I, I say that literature gap, you identify from literature, then you back it up with practical issues, you become a research gap. That's my definition of research gap. I differentiate a lit literature gap from research gap, okay? Literature gap, you identify from literature, and when you connect it with the industrial issues, practical issues, it become a research gap. To me, huh? I could be wrong. Now, this is an example of how, uh, how my students have done it, okay? Hello, Sorry, excuse me. Someone is talking. Is it Miss Mars or someone? Yeah, I just muted, bro. Sorry about it. Okay. All right. Uh, let me show you a practical example to get you familiarize with how a research problem, a research gap, been identified. Okay. So you can see this student has written the overview of the study. This student has done a research on farm value. Okay, and then he's connecting with the financial and business risks. It's a finance topic. Okay. And then he's connecting with the knowledge gap and then practical gap. Okay, so the significance of the study is highlighted at the overview of the study itself. At the introduction, you are saying about your topic, introducing your topic, and you are telling why it is so important to do research on this yet without identifying the research gap, huh? without identifying the research gap. Now here, you can see, uh, very quickly I show you. Oh, sorry. Um, these are the literature will be done on farm value. There's a dependent variable. And he has citations. If it is small, you may not see, but uh, I will share the slide with you. So he has all the citations here, uh, talking about uh, farm value, you see. It say let's focus on long-term performance uh, measurement. It's a gap. Measurement are not only scanned but also mixed. So that is also a gap. Looking at uh, enterprise value, like right? robust and comprehensive scope. So he's looking at enterprise value. So there's also a gap. Volatility in the firm will indicators. There's also a gap. You see. So he's identifying the gaps uh, from there, and then he's continuing. Uh, so research gap is being identified there, and this is how another one you can see. Uh, all those literature are there. Uh, the supporting earlier was dependent, now independent, and all the citations are there. And then from those citations on the right side, I put the research gaps for you. Okay. So if you do that, this kind of job, if you can do, and you go to the final viva, I'm sure you will have um, easier time. You can defend your work very well. Okay. Uh, you should not have difficulty defending your work. Okay. So you are identifying from it.